So just taking things back a little, what is a secondary? A secondary means that you're not investing in the fund when it's first launched. Usually after year three or four or five or six or seven or eight, when the fund is has started, it has invested some money. Now the LPs in the fund want some liquidity. Somebody else comes in and steps into their position. That's why they are in a secondary position. They're not buying, investing in the fund as a primary. They're coming in as a secondary. And I will ask Michelle and everybody, everybody else, please chime in as to what are you hearing? Why is this a golden era for secondaries? So Michelle, what are you hearing from your clients? And also for the audience, if you can demystify, what are, the, there are many specialists on this team here. Uh, so we will talk to them and talk about that particular kind of secondaries that they do. But maybe you can start with a general uh, information about what different kinds of secondaries are. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Sure. and. Uh, Given the title of our panel, Evolution in the Secondary Market, I thought I'd talk a bit, little bit about the evolution and what we've seen take place over the last few years and how it's changed and, and what we're seeing today, as well as some stats on the current market. Uh, so we certainly have seen a lot of evolution. Uh, you know, the genesis was really an LP seller's market focused on selling portfolios. Uh, most of the transactions that occurred were, you know, pension fund driven, sovereign wealth fund driven. Um, often it was because of the denominator effect. We saw a lot of transactions happen post GFC where they were over their target allocations and you know, decided to sell. Uh, wasn't a great time to be a seller, but you know, distress necessitated that in some cases. There was also a lot of regulatory selling. Um, with the Volcker rule, banks had to retreat from private equity in particular. So that was driving a lot of the market. And then a few years ago, we began to see a real shift towards GP-led secondaries, where we were saying we have great assets, we're not ready to part with them. Um, we can sell either single asset or portfolio of assets to generally secondary firms and other buyers, or often LPs were given the opportunity to roll their stakes into this new vehicle as well, it was called a continuation fund. And that actually became the majority of the market uh, within the last couple of years. But recently, we've seen a shift back towards more LP-driven selling. We've seen less driven by denominator impact this time. It's really been a shift more towards a portfolio management tool. So on the sell side, you know, pensions largely have been winnowing down their legacy relationships. Uh, they've decided they have too many managers in their roster. They need to uh, call that a bit. Um, you know, also, if there's areas where they have too much concentration, they've decided to sell off and change the mix a bit. And th then there's a lot of new investors coming into the space who are focused on, you know, or new portfolios who are focused on J-curve mitigation, they want to get instant diversification, they can backfill exposure via secondary purchases. So it's been a great tool in that regard. But today, you know, we're definitely seeing a lot more GP-led deals. Um, I think in a muted exit environment, it's one way where you know, GPs can drive liquidity. Um, show some distributions back to LPs, especially when those LPs are saying, Okay, well, you're fundraising, but you haven't shown any exits from your prior fund. So how are you going to uh, achieve that? So a great way for them to be able to do that is to you know, execute a couple of continuation deals, show some distributions. Um, you know, LP reaction to that is a little bit different. Uh, it just depends on how it's structured. And we'll, we'll talk about continuations funds in a lot more detail, so I won't go uh, too deep here. But we're really starting to see those come back to life. And in fact, I've seen 12 opportunities you know, from the LP side just in the last two weeks. Um, but that, I was just gonna just quickly touch on the fundraising environment. Yeah. Um, there's a little bit of a disconnect though, just in terms of fundraising. You know, we're talking about the golden age of secondaries and there's been a lot of fundraising. Everyone's anticipating it to be a great time. So just a couple stats on the market. 
So Prequin noted 46 deals and almost 50 billion of transaction volume through September. Um, and that contrasts with you know, last year, it's about double, um, we're only three quarters of the way through the year. And we're on pace to exceed 2020's record level of 84 billion of, of secondary volume. And on the other hand, when you look at deals getting done, while they're starting to increase, we are seeing a, uh, a decrease in the you know, bids, uh, bid ask spread. Transaction volumes are lower than fundraising. And so, you know, dry powder's been building up. We think there will be an opportunity, uh, but that is taking place. And then just some of the more recent developments in this space, we've been seeing, you know, a lot, certainly on the private equity side, about three quarters of all deals done this year have been, you know, played in a lot more private equity buyouts across different stages, less so on the venture side. Um, you know, still some concerns about valuation there requires a lot of specialized expertise, as uh, Tom will touch on. Uh, on the real estate side, very little volume, you know, about 4% of deals this year were in the real estate sector. You know, just concerns around valuation and overall uncertainty on the outlook for particular areas, particularly when you look at things like office, and then one interesting development has really been around private credit. And we've seen that secondary market develop, you know, very similar to private equity you know, 15 years ago, um, as private equity has matured and now private credit is starting to mature, then a lot of capital raised. So you're gonna have sellers that need liquidity. Uh, you also have, um, investors creating new portfolios where they may want you know, the diversification, increased J-curve mitigation, um, and tailored exposures that you can get by purchasing um, private credit funds on the secondary market. i say one thing to be cautious of, though, because you're basically reaching back and buying you know, two, three vintage years ago in many cases for private credit is to really understand and look at the underlying portfolios. Many of those deals were done when, you know, interest rates were lower, but, um, you know, covenants were a lot looser. There may be less interest coverage. You know, how are those loans faring today? How are they valued? So a lot of uh, digging to be done, uh, but certainly, you know, the opportunities there, and we're seeing a lot of dedicated capital being mm -hmm. raised around that. Awesome.